For the second question here, I'm going to use the same idea again with using double angle formula. And this time we've got um, cos x equals sine of x on 2. Now, from the double angle formulas, you'll see that cos of 2x equals, uh, it equals 1 take away 2 sine squared of x, okay? In this case, we've actually got the double angle here is x, and that's half. So that implies that cos of x, half this, equals 1 minus 2 sine squared of x on 2, okay? So what that's going to help us do is get all the angles in terms of x on 2. So, therefore, we've got the cos x here replaced with cos x with the 1 minus 2 sine squared x on 2. So we're going to replace cos x. So we've got 1 minus 2 sine squared x on 2 equals sine of x on 2. And I'm going to put everything onto this side just because then I can get a nice uh, positive here. So I'm going to have 0 equals sine x on 2 plus 2 sine squared x on 2 take away 1. And just rewriting it so that it's a little bit nice, I'm just putting this over to this side. Now, a really, really common trick that uh, you'll see in a lot of questions is hiding something that looks quite ugly um, as a quadratic. Okay, so this is really just a quadratic here. And the reason I can see that is because you've got a squared term of something, you've got that same something but just without a power, and then you've got something else. And the trick with these is whatever this something here is, let that equal a letter. We're going to just call it A. Don't use X because you already have X in here. So what you've got here, this is sine squared X on 2. And just so you can see it a little bit more clearly, this is sine of X on 2 all squared plus sine of X on 2 minus 1 equals 0. If we substitute this sine of X on 2 out with an A, so it's a substitution, then what you're going to have is 2a squared plus a minus 1 equals 0. So you see what you've done there is you've just replaced the part here, here, here. You've replaced it with the a. That's all you've done. And what this is now is a quadratic. And you can solve this quadratic using your calculator or if you wanted to, to use a quadratic formula. I'm going to use quadratic formula just because we haven't seen it for a little while. It's good to keep this one in your head. So the solution here for a, which is our variable, equals, well, I shouldn't really write it like this, but anyway, negative b, which is negative whatever that value is there, which is 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared. So remember that b is whatever the coefficient here is, so it's 1 minus 4 times the coefficient a times c over 2 times this coefficient, 2 times 2. So you've got negative 1 plus or minus in here, that's 8, negative 8. So this will be actually 9 in there, 1 minus, um, minus 8, which is 9 over 4. So we're going to have negative 1 plus or minus square root, excuse me, square root of 9, which is 3 over 4. So our two solutions are going to be A equals negative 1 plus 3 on 4 which is going to be 2 over 4, which is a half, and a equals negative 1, and this time the other branch, which is the negative branch. Remember the plus minus means you've got two branches. So that would be negative 4 over 4, which is negative 1. So you've actually got two solutions there, negative 1 and negative a half. I'm just going to erase this side now, so we can work on that. So A, remember what A is, A is sine x on 2, so we have two cases to consider. Sine of x over 2 equals a half, and we've also got sine of x over 2 equals negative 1. Okay. Now for a half, we know from our triangles, sine of a half, that's this angle over here, pi on 6. So we know this is going to be pi on 6. And from our graph as well, because this is positive, it's going to be pi on 6, or over this direction as well, pi on 6 back from pi. Okay. The other thing to keep in mind here is that we have x over 2. So we need to think about the domain we're solving over. So in this case, 
we have x over 2 is an element of. Divide both of these by 2, so we're actually working over the right area. So we actually only have to be considering x on 2. So we only have to consider angles that are between 0 and pi, which is nice. So what we're going to end up with in the first case for a half, we, so we have pi on 6, so x over 2 equals, we've got for our first solution there, pi over 6, and for our next solution, we know that it has to be pi on 6 less than pi, which is 5 pi on 6. So what that means for our solutions for x, multiply both sides by 2, so you're going to have 2 pi on 6 and 10 pi on 6, which can be simplified. I'm going to put my solutions here at the end, it's pi on 3 and 5 pi on 3. Now I'm, I might be adding on some other solutions here, so I've left some room. So here we've got um, sine of x on 2 equals negative 1, but we're in this region from 0 to pi, which is just the top region here. Now the problem with this is that sine is only negative 1 down here, okay, and because we're not including that region, we actually have no solution for this part of the problem over this domain. So all we're left with is the solutions from this part, from the first case that we considered. So that means that for our question here, cos x equals sine of x over 2, we only have two solutions, pi on 3 and 5 pi on 3.